So let's get to the bad news first. That fourth quarter adjusted net income coming in at a miss. The fourth quarter adjusted operating profit also coming in at a miss. So far, we've actually had some strong numbers come through from some of your peers like Shell and BP. So why this disappointing number from Equinor? Well, I, I've noticed that we are slightly below the expectations out there on the quarter. Uh, remind you that it's a very strong cash generation in the quarter. But from the from accounting perspective, it's, it seems slightly below. I think there are some some specific quarterly specific issues in, in the numbers that, you know, I'm sure we will be, you know, we will be able to explain during the day. It has to do with the pricing structure in a falling market. We, we, we uh, have a bigger differential towards Brent than we, you know, we have in a, in a flat market. So, that it, you know, it will be recovered uh, as we move forward. Uh, we also have some higher expiration activity than, you know, might have been expected out there. And, and also some, some, some weaker results on, on our products trading. So these are sort of quarterly specific issues. The cash flow is very strong and the year as a whole is very strong. So 18 billion in, in, in adjusted earnings uh, for the year. Very strong cash flow. Our debt ratio is taken down to 22%. And we raised the dividend, uh, you know, uh, by, by 13% uh, uh, point going forward. Okay, so you say these are quarter specific issues. Give us your outlook for 2019 then. So we are pointing towards uh, uh, 19 going into 2021 actually. Uh, we will increase earnings. Uh, we will have you know, a cash flow generation of free cash flow organically, 14 billion. We'll raise our return on our capital employed from 12 to 14 uh, percent. So very strong outlooks for the next couple of years. Also pointing towards uh, strong production growth, 3 percent production growth going into 2025 on average. Uh, also supported very much by the Norwegian from the Norwegian continent shelf. So all in all, a very strong set of you know outlooks, uh, uh, enhancing earnings uh, and and cash generation, and also a strong production. Yeah. Let me talk to you then about the outlook uh, for buybacks. You said a full. Year year ago that you saw the scope for buybacks emerging when can that when can we expect that to begin then well our, our preferred way of distributing capital to our shareholders has always been and, and, and will be the, the cash dividend so we raise the cash dividend and that's very clearly stated also in our dividend dividend policy so that is you know increased by 13 percent and the intention is also to continue to grow the dividend from that level uh, in line with the underlying earnings. So that is the priority uh, uh, also in, 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 in the considerations that we've done now. You also um, have said before that you expect the market will start feeling the effect of underinvestment by the end of this year, and that could support oil prices further. Of course, oil prices have recovered somewhat since their slump at the end of last year. Is there a chance that this year will be a bit less volatile and that prices will settle with a floor of $60? I, I, th I expect continued volatility. You know, last, last quarter we saw actually a drop, you know, from the beginning to the end of the quarter by 30 US dollars. Mm. Now, as an illustration of the volatility and the certainties that we still see, uh, the market is more balanced than it has been over the last couple of years. And that means that, you know, it's responding to, to geopolitical developments, for instance, str stronger than it has, you know, in, in, in a weak market. So, so I think that is you know, something we expect that, you know, if you look down the road, a couple of years down the road, one, two years, you know, we do expect that we will see the impact of the very low investment levels that we have seen during the downturn. So that will impact the old price. We will see a tighter market. Exactly when that is going to happen, I don't know. We have an estimate of 75 US dollars by 2022. OK, well, let me talk about your investment then. So CapEx number out today, uh, 11 billion dollars. Should the market, should we see that as confidence by you in the market outlook? How should the market read your CapEx commitment? So first of all, we think we are in good control when it comes to the cost developments. We don't see any cost increases, you know, yet in, in, into our numbers. Uh, we have good control of our projects and we estimate 11 billion on average, you know, for the next three years, also for, 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 for this year. And that is in line with actually what we what we guided uh, last year, uh, same level. Uh, we came slightly down below that in, in last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, but nothing of that is transferred into, into, into this year or next year. So same level, uh, consistency and in good control of, of the projects and in general of the cost developments. Yes, I spoke to uh, the CFO of Shell uh, just a, a, a few days ago and she said that Shell would be able to do it all. Now, I'm talking about the expectations that investors mm. have mm. of oil majors at the moment, which means uh, returning capital to shareholders through dividends or buybacks, investing in new projects and growth, and reducing debt. Shell CFO said they could do it all. Can you pledge to do the same? 
Oh yeah, that's basically what we are pointing at going forward. So we have very you know high quality and and you know a comprehensive investment program. We can do that organically. Uh, we you know given that we can also increase the the cash generation and and continue to strengthen our balance sheet uh, going forward. So so that also gives us opportunities because there are other opportunities to 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 you know for acquisitions and 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 we need to, oil and gas is something we need to replace what you produce you know in a way going forward and we have patience. We can do this when, when times are right, when prices are right. We have a very strong, we increased our reserve replacement ratio by more than 200% uh, this year. So it tells us that we are in a very good position when it comes to resource and resources. So we are patient, but we have the capacity to do that. And at the same time as we can uh, uh, strengthen our balance sheet. Right. You mentioned acquisitions there as well. Just talk to me a little bit about what your plans are on that front. Well, I don't plan with that. We work <laughs> consistently on, on opportunities, the quality of the opportunities. And obviously we screen a lot of these and, and follow that uh, uh, across, across the world, you know, to, to, and, and, and uh, it's the quality of it. We are patient. Uh, there's no rush. We have what a strong... What sort of assets are you looking for then in terms high of... Qual high quality asset that fits to our industrial strength, our, our stra is, you know, fits our strategy going forward. And, and uh, there's no specific geography. It's obviously, it's more important to do things where we already are, where we have a presence than in new places. But beyond that, it's really the quality of the assets and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, and the price that we you know, might, might have to pay. Yeah. Now, that brings me on to this issue then, which is um, when people talk about U.S. shale oil production, what comes to mind is usually the Permian. Now, you're involved in U.S. shale, but as far as I understand, not the Permian. So what I want to know is you said that prices are too high in the Permian for you to buy assets there. We've talked about you buying assets. Is that still the case that you would not look to the Permian? So, so we look into the the U.S. shale, and we are there, have quite s significant production, and it's it's the kind of assets that you need to replace, you know, by by new opportunities. So we do that mainly in the areas where we already are, deepening where we already are. We look for new opportunities. Permian has has been, and I expect will continue to be very highly priced, and it's not a priority for us.